Hello again, everyone. Brian Ryder, CFP, alongside Bill Bowman, CPA and President of Aegis Financial. Well, Bill, we finally have some decent news to report. Uh, the market's been enjoying a nice little rally here as of late. So why don't we start there, talk about the status of the market, and then uh, some of the reasons behind that. Sure. The, the current rally that we're in is about 13% up. And so what's uh, significant about this rally is it's staying around. Uh, we've had two more attempts that got up to 10%, but both of those sputtered out on us. And so this one's hanging on. And there are some definite reasons for that. Probably the most is the important is the oil prices. And you can see that, as we talked about in the past, just driving by the pump and filling up, you see prices are coming down. Right. Commodities in general, not just not just oil, but mm -hmm. uh, you're seeing it in copper, uh, egg, uh, much more than just oil. That's right. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things that we're watching, too, is is bond yields. Uh, bond yields have have kind of turned lower. And typically when when investors don't get as much yield, um, that's when they they tend to gravitate back towards stocks. Yeah, that's right. So is an alternative investment from equities versus versus fixed income, when the yield goes up, there seems to be a trend, a trend towards moving to that. But when they drop down, as they have now, we see a movement more back towards equities. Yeah. So we're still not out of the woods completely mm -hmm. yet. Uh, there's certainly a lot of volatility is to be expected. But at the same time, a lot of the bad news we do think has been priced into the, the market. Yeah, we do anticipate that if we do see some prizes uh, in the in the earnings reports that we'll talk about a little bit later, um, we could see a, a nice continued move upward. Yeah. So that is that. That's not to um, belittle the the economic news that came out with the the GDP for the second quarter in a row coming in at negative point nine percent. So let's talk about that and then talk about what the Fed is doing with that. Sure. And what's important here is that there seems to be a lot of dialogue and are we in or are we not in a recession? And I guess for us, we don't want to really discuss that today, but we want to discuss if we are in a recession, what does that mean? And we've been concerned that if we are, then the down of the market would be more severe. So if you are, are truly in a recession, we think this one is a short lived recession and mild uh, in nature. And that, that gives us some uh, some relief that we don't see a major down in the market at this point. Right. Well, the Fed obviously looks at more than just the GDP when they're when they're analyzing their data. Uh, some of the important ones that they looked at, uh, we've talked about in past videos, the personal consumption expenditures, the PCE. Uh, some of the other ones is ISM uh, services index that they look at. So why don't we start there and talk about those a little bit. Well, let's start with the ISM. Uh, here we're seeing a fairly dramatic decline in pricing in the service sector. And why that's important is that's a leading indicator. So historically, when that has dropped, we've seen inflation drop right behind it. So that's, that's a good sign. Also, the PCE that we looked at is now in its third consecutive month through June of a decline. So a few months ago, we talked about the first month and that a month doesn't start a trend, but now we're seeing a trend developing in three months in a row. Right, right. Well, given those data points, uh, mm -hmm. the Fed did come out and they, they did once again raise rates. Uh, the market had been anticipating either a 1% or a 0.75%. The Fed raised it the 75 basis points or 0.75. Um, the market seemed to react positively to that. Yeah, they did, uh, but it was more about what Chairman Powell said after the meeting that caught people's attention, where he stated that he anticipated the interest rates slowing uh, going forward. So we do see that these indicators are affecting the Fed and their policy. Yeah, and he's been very clear throughout this whole process that uh, he wants to orchestrate that soft landing and everything's going to be data dependent. So the risk we have is if the Fed overshoots and actually raises too high at this point and then pushes us further into a recession. So we're watching that really closely. Right. Well, the other half of the Fed's dual mandate is employment and keeping keeping full employment. Um, we did have initial claims data come out this week. So let's let's talk that quick and then let's talk why that other half is so important. Well, the, the reason why we, we tend to look at employment numbers is it's a driving demand on the economic growth. So as people work, they spend money, and we need people to spend money to keep the economy growing. So this is an important area, and what we're seeing is unemployment starting to tick up, but in the retail uh, end, of the, end of the market. And so therefore, uh, we don't anticipate uh, the 
unemployment rate changing much. In fact, we do anticipate it slightly reducing uh, over the next 12 months. Right. And that lower end retail is, is really what gets affected the most by mm-hmm. inflation. So let's let's wrap it up. What do, what do we expect coming um, in the next several months here? Well, Brian, I do anticipate that we will see a sideways grind for the next few months uh, before we see some movement up. Now, we could see a surprise on the upside, but that's not quite as likely as this sideways grinding move. So if you or your loved one is concerned about your portfolio in these market conditions, we'd be more than happy to work with you. 